Hey everybody, Dr. Ray, and we are gonna review Next DNS today. It's a DNS server that I've been using for several months, so I wanted to give it a good review. If you're not sure what a DNS server is and you're coming to this video looking for reviews, basically what it does, a DNS server helps you. It, it is what searches for a website. When, like when I search Google, like when I find google.com, the DNS server pulls up google.com. That's essentially, in a nutshell, what a DNS server does. It finds the websites we're looking for. You're always using one. Your local home ISP network is using a DNS server. The reason that we switch and use these other ones is our local DNS server that our ISP uses is usually pretty bad. It's A, it's usually slow, so a DNS server is much faster. And B, using a, a, like one, a different one allows us to control so much. For example, I can filter out unwanted content, things that I don't want my kids to be reviewing or seeing. I can filter out like any kind of mature content, phishing, malicious, anything bad that I don't want to be displayed on any machines on my network. I can just make it gone in a second. I can get rid of things like ads. And that's not to mention that it's just so much faster. Um, additionally, I can track what's happening on my network. I can see Every website someone accesses, I can see it by device. Um, just all kinds of great things that you can do with a DNS server. It's totally worth you getting one because some of them are free, some of them cost a little bit. Um, so let's get into next DNS and let me talk about my experience with it and show you what it's like. All right, so up on my screen here, you can see the next DNS website. One of the first things I'll do is I'll go to pricing just so you can see the price. You can see that they allow you to try it. Um, they give you 300,000 queries per month, which to be honest with you, just lets you try it. That was about a week or two worth of queries for me. Um, so it gives you like a free week or two to try it out. And that's every month. So you can go ahead and try it out and see if you like it. I went ahead and bought the pro version. It was $20 for the year, which is really nothing considering what it does for me. Um, I probably wouldn't want to pay too much more for a DNS server because there are some good free ones out there that do most of what this does, but not everything. Um, so those extra features were worth the 20 more dollars per year that I'm going to spend on this one. So I did, did decide to buy it. So I do have the pro version. All right, so we're going to go in and I'm going to show you next DNS and kind of show you, uh, talk about like setting it up, uh, whether it was easy or hard and show you the features of the software. All right, so you go in, you log in, and you can see I've got some stuff like blanked out on the screen. That's because there's like personal like information here that you don't need to see. So like that's going to be locked out. Sorry. Um, but basically you can see that I'm all good. Uh, that means that I'm all connected. If I scroll down, they give you the setup guide. Setup was super, super, super easy. Now I was able to set this up really easily within my, my modem. Um, I was able to set this up. Now you might be able to do it like that, but every network is gonna be slightly different. They have a setup guide. It was super easy to follow. Honestly, this took me about three seconds to install. No, probably like 30 seconds to install it on my system. So really, really, really super easy. All right, so let's go through all, so setup was super easy. So let's go through all the different tabs and talk about what each of them does. All right, first thing you get is security. And basically you get to pick what you wanna stop, like threat intelligence feeds, like, Google safe browsing, which I checked for my children, all kinds of different stuff that you can pick if you want to have happen. Now you look at mine and you're like, well, why don't you just have every single thing clicked? The reason that I don't have every single thing clicked is because sometimes like certain things that I might personally access, like this was blocking them. So you have to kind of like play around with these settings on your network when you first get it. My advice to you is start out with like nothing blocked and then slowly like add things like click one see what it does make sure none of your main websites are blocked and that kind of stuff um but you can see like protects against COVID 19 phishing like you just can click stuff and it it does it all right so that's security features privacy basically i chose three block lists there are tons of block lists to choose from you can block disguised third-party trackers and stuff like that um, but basically I've chosen AdGuard DNS filter. And what that does is it blocks most ads that are on websites, which means like Facebook will load much quicker. S sites like that with tons of ads will just load much faster by blocking these. Um, and then I've done, like I allow affiliate and tracking links. And the reason that I allow that is because I use a lot of those, like my wife and I use a lot of those with various business things that we send out. So I want to be able to like see that. And sometimes like if someone's giving me a good link, I want them to get the affiliate like money from Amazon or whatever, if they're, if they're guiding me to a product, like they deserve it. So I have that, I do allow that. 
All right, next thing we get the parental control. I think this is really good for you parents out there. So first of all, you can add a website, app, or game. Now here's the good and bad about this. You click add a website, and they give you basic things like TikTok, Tinder, I can like, and basically when you click on these, you block them. Um, this is great and all, and I think this can work for some parents. Um, but like, if I blocked League of Legends, I'd be blocking that for myself. <laughs> like, I'm the one that plays that. Um, maybe if you have like a high school kid and you don't want them to use Twitter, you would, could, Tinder, I mean, you could block that. Um, stuff like that. But the one thing I don't like about this is it's very like, you know, this is your, these are your options. While these are a lot of options, these aren't helpful to me because like, I don't want to block Roblox completely. Um, I might want to block like certain games in Roblox or I might want to block things on not even on this list and I can't just like pick a random website and block that. I can only block what they've given me unless I specifically go to my deny list. But I can't block any other apps besides what they've allowed me. I can block by category, which again seemed great, but like I don't block any of these because A, I can, I'm searching what my kids are doing so I know what they're looking at. But like I could block all social media, but like I don't want to do that because I use some of them. But you can pick that. And then you can set recreation time. For example, I can say like, <clears throat> you know, all of these are available like from this time each day. So like this is great for parental controls. You can really say like Roblox is available from 6 to 8 p.m. Hey kids, that's it. You go on it at 3 p.m. and you're out of luck because you ain't getting on it. So that's kind of cool. And then we have safe search, YouTube restricted mode and block bypass methods. I had these um, clicked when I first started using the piece of software and we were getting some unusual searches in YouTube actually from the YouTube restriction restricted mode my kids were getting some inappropriate stuff it almost like did the opposite so we no longer have that it's supposed to filter out mature videos but what it was doing it was also filtering out like the kids videos for my kids they couldn't find certain things so we had to we had to stop that um, deny list I have nothing basically you just enter a domain like I can enter my website like block and no one can access it so that's kind of cool and good same with allow list um, I'm not going to show you my allow list but it's the same thing as deny list it just allows allows you to access certain domains. Then we get to analytics, which is pretty cool. I can pick by device. You can, you, you do have to set up each device if you want to track like by device. But overall, this this is all, you're just your whole entire network. So we're looking at my whole entire network. We can see how many things like are blocked here. This was when I was away. So of course there'd be hardly anything blocked. But look, even when I'm away, like, I was away this day and there were almost 6,000 queries blocked. That's from like Roku and stuff like that. Just always, you can see like Facebook's always like my tablets, Google, like these things, my Roku all the time is trying to connect to all kinds of stuff when I'm not using it at like three in the morning and stuff, kind of crazy. Um, and you can see how many things like each thing has blocked. The root domains, like tons of Roku, Apple, Google, Facebook. like these places are just tracking you like crazy. Like it's kind of crazy to see that. You can see where my traffic's from the US. All right, next we get the logs. Logs is pretty cool. Um, I can see like every IP address that's being, uh, and I have this blocked obviously, but you can see like the IP addresses, you can see everything that is accessing something and when it happened or not which is kind of neat. And this will go through like every single day. And I can search, like I can search. So I have my settings that these delete every three months. So I have three months worth of logs. I can search like a bad word here and see if anyone's accessed a site that has that bad word. Or I can search like my name. Has anyone accessed a site with my name? Oh, look, people are accessing my website. But I can see like when they accessed it, I can see the date, time, um, Pretty cool stuff, right? I can see how many times my site was accessed. So you can really like spy on your kids or whoever, like anyone on your network. So if you're at like work and they're using, like they're spying on everything everyone can do. Like it's pretty easy. Then we get to our settings and uh, you can see I have logs enabled. So you can choose whether to enable logs or not. Um, you can choose how long to keep those logs for, which I've, I keep, I just have mine set to three months. And then they give you some other, uh, 
some other options here, which are nice, the, like the cash boost, um, which is good, helps you get to sites quicker. So like things like that are really good. And you, you know, you gotta pick what you want. I have all these, because these are for, to speed up my browser performance. Again, with all the settings that you have here, you really have to play with them and see if you like them or not. Because if you play with them and you find that they're messing up your system, just uncheck that setting, as I found with like the YouTube search one, didn't just didn't work for me and my kids. And that's it. And you can delete your whole configuration if you want to. You can create multiple configurations if you want to. So that you can like very easily, like when you have guests, go to like new configuration and like have like my guest configuration. So that when I know if like if I have people here, we have, we're a little more secure or not or whatever. Um, so things like that. But that's my review. I think for $20, the uh, customization that you get is worth it. You know, I was using OpenDNS prior to this. OpenDNS is free. Um, it's not as configurable and I can't see my, I can't search through logs in OpenDNS. So some of those features that this does are worth $20 a year. Um, if it was like $50 a year, it'd probably be stretching it and I might not think it's worth it. But for $20, I'd say it was worth it for me. Um, and just to compare, to show you the other DNS systems. So I've searched this and obviously I'm in North America, so that's where I'm searching. But I can look, I'm looking at the public DNS servers and you can see like the query speed because obviously you want one that's fast right now keep in mind that like just because this says dns filter is number one based on your location and, and like what access is like at your house or your business this might be the the slowest one so you got to kind of take these with a grain of salt but in general this is a good idea of how quick they are and how quick they aren't. But you can see next DNS is number four here and these change every single day. So you can't like even look at these and say like, well, this that means DNS filter is the best one. No, it might not be, it might be though. So you have to kind of test them out. But honestly, like any of these in the top 10 are good. So you're you're good. But you can see like raw performance, like the, the query speed is really good for all of these. So as I said, I was using um, open DNS before but we can see the uptime. They all have really good uptime. Next DNS, 100%. But honestly, any of these are good and fine. And quality, you can see that as well. All good quality. Next DNS is number three. So you can see it's got good statistics. And if I look in the last 30 day period, um, all good stuff. So this is the kind of thing you want to see when you're searching your DNS. Now, one of the best things to do if you really want to check it out is you can download some software and I'm not going to talk get into it in this video, but you can download some things that actually test like how quick the DNS is responding on your machine in your system to really like get like narrow it down to the quickest if you want to do that. But honestly, like I've been really happy with next DNS so far. Um, so I do recommend it. I mean, for 20 bucks, you do get a lot for it. I think it's great for a home system, especially those with children, you know, or people who are just have random or multiple people on a Wi-Fi so to really make sure that like your system's more secure, make sure it's quicker for yourself and make sure that things are working as is. If it was just me living in my house, I'd probably continue to use OpenDNS because it's free and it gives me that speed. Um, but since I have kids and people, it's worth the $20 a year for what I do get. So hope you enjoyed my review, y'all. Later.